In our previous video, we took a look at how we can build a frequency table by hand, but often these are much easier to build using Excel. In our previous video, we took a look at how data was collected on the number of hours students spend on their homework. The same data is stored here, but this time it's not in order, but Excel is going to help us still build that same frequency table with this data. Excel has lots of great commands that make statistics and other calculations a lot easier. For example, if we wanted to find the minimum value of this data set, we can hit the equals sign in an open cell and type min for minimum, open a parentheses, and then I can select all the data. When I hit Enter, it'll tell me that the minimum value of that data is 2. In a similar way, we can find the largest or maximum value by hitting equals max for max, open a parentheses, select the data, and when I hit Enter, it'll tell me the maximum value of this data set is 15. We know with frequency distributions, the low value has to be half a unit below the minimum. So I see my minimum is 2, so I know my first low value is 1.5. We can use Excel to calculate the width, or we could do this on a calculator. Either way works, but let's go ahead and do it on Excel. On Excel, to do calculations, we always will start with equals. Then I'm going to open a parentheses for the numerator. We want to take the maximum value minus the minimum value. I can just click that maximum value hit the subtraction sign, and click the minimum value, and close the parentheses. Then we divide by the number of classes we want. We said we wanted to have four classes, so I'm going to divide by four. And when I hit Enter, it gives me a width of 3.25. Remember, we always want to round the width up to the next whole number. Even if it's a whole number, we round up to the next whole number. In this case, then, we'll go to a width of four. So in the high position, I'm going to say equals, and then I'm going to click the low value and type in plus 4. That's going to add 4 to the low value. For my next row, we want the low value to match the previous high value. I can actually type in equals and click the previous high value and hit Enter. What's nice is the high value is always the cell to the left plus 4. Because I told it to grab the cell to the left instead of typing in 1.5, if I were to grab that bottom right dot and drag it down, it's going to copy that formula down and add 4 to the next row. My low value now is already equal to the diagonal value on the high. So both my low and high values are connected by a formula. So if I grab that dot in the bottom right corner and drag down, it'll copy those formulas down to give me the remaining low and high values. Let's fill in the midpoints. To fill in the midpoints, we want it to be the average of consecutive classes. I can have Excel do that calculation by typing equals, open a parentheses for the numerator, and take the low value from the first class, and add, clicking the low value from the second class, and then I can divide by 2. When I hit Enter, it'll give me my midpoint of 3.5. Now I know the midpoint is going to increase by the same width as the class has increased, that width of 4. I can type in equals the previous midpoint plus the width of 4. And when I hit Enter, it gives me my new midpoint. I can also click the dot in the bottom right to copy that formula down to finish out my midpoints. For my frequencies, to count my frequencies, it would be very helpful if my data was in order. Excel has a command that does that. Across the top of the Excel program are several tabs. We want to go to the Data tab, select all my data, and then under Sort and Filter, there should be an A to Z sort, which will sort them from lowest to highest. Now that the data numbers are in order, I can count quickly how many numbers are between 1.5 and 5.5. I'll go ahead and highlight those in yellow just to illustrate. There's four values. The next class is between 5.5 and 9.5. Counting those, I'll highlight those in a different color just to emphasize, I see there are nine values. The next class goes from 9.5 to 13.5. And just for emphasis, I'm going to highlight those in a different color. And I see that there are eight values there. The last class only has the one value there. And now I have my frequencies filled in. To figure out how many total frequencies there are, Excel has a nice command that will add up that column. I can type in equals sum for sum and open a parentheses. 
highlight all the values I want to add, and I can see there are 22 data values in my data set. So for my relative frequency, I can say equals the number next to it divided by 22. And when I hit Enter, it'll give me the relative frequency. And again, I can click that dot in the bottom right corner to drag it down and calculate all of the relative frequencies for my frequency table. For my cumulative relative frequencies, we want the first data value to match the one to the left. So I'll say equals and click the data value I want. After this first one, we take our previous answer and add the next relative frequency. I'll type in equals, click my previous answer, and add the next relative frequency. When I hit Enter, it's going to give me that cumulative relative frequency value. And now I can grab that dot and drag it down to copy the formula all the way down. The nice part about doing these calculations on Excel is it reduces the opportunity for error and even provides a little more accuracy with more decimal digits than we had when we did it by hand. I encourage you to use Excel as a useful tool to help accelerate a lot of the calculations that we'll be doing in this class.